Hebrews 2. Yeah, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that had it? Hallelujah. Amen. So we drew our theme from this. But when you look critically into the Bible, salvation is a major thing in the Bible. So it's a wide thing. Uh, so let us have a short prayer. Father, thank you, King of all glory, for this moment everlasting that we are to hear from you through your servant, Martin, Pastor Martin Samuel, O God. How King of all glory, we pray that you will mightily use him, Jehovah God, as we are the vessel to deliver unto us that which Lord you brought us, Jehovah God, even in many years ago, Jehovah, that we may be educated, that we may be equipped of you, Jehovah God. But you tell us that to know you, Lord, is eternal life. And that to mighty desire in our hearts to know you, Abba Father. Thank you, King of all glory, for your granting unto us the spirit of wisdom, spirit of understanding into the knowledge of your Son, Jesus, what he did to us in salvation, Jehovah Father. We pray, King of all glory, that in meekness, that in gladness our hearts will be open to hear of you, Father. Thank you, King of all glory, for he is anointed of you by the battle of your Holy Spirit in him, Jehovah. That indeed, King of all glory, will speak through the, through the express Jehovah God demonstration of your spirit. Thank you, Father, oh God. You are perfected in Jehovah by your perfect sacrifice on the cross for this task, Jehovah. And we are hearing from you tonight, our Father. We glorify in our hearts as we get edified in you, Jesus. We worship you and we honor you. In Jesus Christ, we pray believe and trust him. Amen. 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 Now, allow me to ask us to just turn to our theme, uh, which is actually drawn from the book of Hebrews, chapter number two. Actually, Pongeze wa Imbaki, you really sang so well. Yeah, especially the praise beat. But now you are missing us out here to him, but every time I try to sing, my voice goes in the opposite direction. <laughs> yeah, the musical instruments. My wife and kids are musically gifted. And every time we try to sing in the family choir, my kids say that you na ribuizo. So thank you for the wonderful singing. Yeah, and even the choir presentation. My Brother has such a good and smooth voice here. He lay a praise, Karibu ni kunja nisi chukue kama wa tocho wa mungu, de kongo lizu. But because I'm a visitor, I have to contain myself. Yeah, maybe next time, when I come, I will really dance vigorously. Amen. Yeah, now Hebrews chapter 2, verse number 3, the Bible says, How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which are the first? began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that had it. Let's go back to verse number one. Let's begin from verse number one and perhaps run up to verse number four just to help us uh, capture a bit of the context. Yeah, the Bible says, therefore we ought to give the more honest heed to the things which we have heard lest at any time we should let them sleep. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, <coughs> and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation which had first begun to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that had him. God also bearing them witness, all with signs and wonders, and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will. Now, allow me to do an exposition of our theme for the weekend, uh, uh, for the revival weekend. And one of the things I want to say is that, you know, the book of Hebrews is a very fascinating book. It's quite, quite an interesting book. Yeah, over the years I've had opportunities to actually teach through the book yeah, in, in a college setup and just be able to expose the content that is in the book. 
Now, one of the things you will notice when you read the book of Hebrews is it is actually geared towards one major purpose. You know, whoever wrote the book, you know, people argue a lot over the authorship of this book. Other people will say it was written by Paul. Others will even say it was written by Apollos. Uh, others say even it was written by Barnabas. So many people hold different views concerning who the author is. Now, from where I stand, I do not actually know who wrote the book of Hebrews. The only thing that I know is that it was written under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 So I am not even bothered by the question of authorship per se. But the author of this particular book actually writes with one major purpose. And the purpose is to be able to bring out the superiority of the person of Jesus Christ. You know in his writing he endeavors to do his level best to actually bring out the person of Jesus standing high atop the mountain. You know, uh, in comparison to any other personality or any other institution that existed in the Old Testament. You will notice that right from the beginning of chapter number one, when he writes, he begins to speak about Jesus, who is actually superior to the angels. Then he begins to talk about Jesus being even superior to Moses, to Joshua. He says that this Jesus is actually a high priest that is superior to the Aaronic priesthood. Are we together? And by the time he gets to chapter number 8 and 10, up to 10, he talks about how this Jesus is actually above the Mosaic law. So the author of the book of Hebrews is basically bringing out the aspect of the supremacy of the person of Jesus. Now, one of the things that you will notice about this book if you read it, at times it may appear as though it is a complex book. And this happens especially to people who are not acquainted with the Old Testament sacrificial system. They may not be able to fully bring out the meaning of this particular, uh, particular book. Now, one of the things you need to realize is that for you to understand the book of Hebrews well, you need to read it hand in hand with the book of Leviticus. Are we together? Yeah, kitabu chawala. Walau, unajua kulikuwa na matanga mahali muubili, akasema in the book of Leviticus. Kalimani akasema kwa kitabu chawalevi. So, ni kitabu chawala. So if you study the book of Leviticus together with the book of Hebrews, you will actually be able to make a lot of sense out of it. And you equally need to be schooled. In other words, go back to the Bible and read the first books of Moses, the Pentateuch, uh, and understand some of the things that were actually happening in the Old Testament. Now, this book was written as an encouragement. An encouragement to the Hebrew Christians that were going through a hard time. Many of them were actually living in a context where there was a bit of persecution. And you see, at one point, some of them were even almost making a point of returning to their old religion of Judaism. They were about to abandon the person of Jesus and go back to embrace that which they were used to, Judaism. They wanted to go back to, to Judaism. And you see, nothing was supposed to actually detract them from focusing on the person of Jesus. And that is why when the author is writing, he is basically out to encourage them to understand that the salvation 
they had received was so great. Are we together? So great. The salvation experience through the person of Jesus was so great to actually be compromised for anything. It was too great to be exchanged for any other faith, for any other system of belief. And so he urges them to actually hold fast to their confession of faith. Are we together? Now, my friends, it's important for you to know that when you look at verse 1 which we have read, you know it begins with an exhortation the need to pay more careful attention. Yeah, that we must pay more careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away. These Hebrew Christians were almost drifting away from the person of Jesus. You know when we talk about drifting away, the best thing that would explain that is actually a sea, you know, maybe a ship on voyage right in the sea that loses its moorings and so it is just moving here and there without any sense of direction. So these people are almost beginning to drift away from the person of Jesus. Now, if we are talking about the so great salvation. It becomes important that we understand what salvation really means. You know the word salvation carries a connotation of rescuing something that is at risk. Something that is facing some kind of danger or peril. When we talk about saving something, we are talking about some form of release from some kind of stress, being delivered, being salvaged from something that is threatening. That is the basic meaning of this word, salvation. But you see, as you look at it, you will realize that the word has meant several things to different people at different times. Ramnile umesota kabisa lafu simi nalio kiangalia ni kaempesa. Yeah. Mtu wame kukumbuka wame kutumia 2K. Hei unasema hui kwele hui ukuzo na nene save. Nani ya lewa? Yeah you look at the provision that has come in and in your context that is actually what? Salvation. Are you seeing that? But now, when we talk about salvation, the word salvation comes from a Greek word known as soteria. Now, in theology we have a course known as soteriology, which basically is the doctrine of salvation. The doctrine of salvation where you understand everything about conversion, about repentance, about regeneration, about sanctification, about justification, you know, glorification, each and everything that pertains to salvation. Now, this word soteria was derived from another word soter, which means savior. Are we together? So the word salvation communicates the thought of deliverance. It communicates the thought of deliverance, the thought of safety. It communicates the thought of preservation. You know, soundness, wholeness, restoration. That is actually what is being conveyed when we talk about salvation as a word. But on the other hand, salvation is basically described as the work of God in terms of rescuing man from his lost estate, his fallen condition of sin. When God rescues a man from his lost estate, what is happening is actually salvation. But you see on the other hand, 
it also describes the estate of a man who has been saved. One that is vitally renewed. One that has been made a partaker of the inheritance of the saints. And if you've never met one, yeah, he is right here speaking to you now. Somebody say amen. Amen. Yeah. 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 Great grandfather yako alikuwa chashelka. Well, it is about four kitam. Shoshua kwa saidi ya mbuyu alikuwa mama assembly. Manipata. Maango zako karibu watatu walikuwa madiko. You see, you have every reason to actually bless God that you are coming from such like a background. Some of us who are not privileged to actually come from such like backgrounds. Yanu kijaribu kuangalia your family tree, unaona waganga. Unaona wachawi. Yanu kiangalia babu alilewa, kiangalia wajomba walikunywa pombe, ikawakunywa mibuili pasuka. Baka kinua mgui ya kanyange after two seconds, inaaja kifutprint. Yanu mgui na pumua jashu ya. Like me, I was given a name, which in my mother that means machicha ya pombe ya bosa. In other words, we are officially welcoming you <laughs> in a clan of terrible drunkards. Are you hearing me? Yeah, so you are basically dedicated to alcohol. So you, when you come from such a, a background, you realize it's not as easy as it is. Yeah, for that one, Mwenye wajomba walikuwa madiko, baba kanisa, mama assembly. Are you hearing? Yeah. And at times you may not really appreciate what it means to be born again. Are we together? Now, it is actually describing the state of a man who has been saved. And one that is actually vitally renewed and made a partaker of the inheritance of the saints. But you see, according to the broadest meaning, as used in scripture, this word salvation encompasses the total work of God, by which he seeks to rescue man from his ruin, from his doom, from his death, you know, from the power of sin, and he bestows upon him the wealth of his grace. Yeah. And you see, the wealth of His grace encompasses eternal life. It also comes with provision for abundant life in the now, in the present tense. But again, the package also includes eternal glory. Glory. Amen. 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 the consummation of my salvation where I will finally now be saved from the very presence of sin and begin to walk on the streets heaven with God. Hallelujah. And begin to ask Paul a punishokuli and daddy. Thank you. 
kuangalia na shangani yake na wewe mbona ukai uko hapa na stress una mshoo hey kuna vile ni god ananisaidia amen kuna vile mungu ananipiga ni ananipiga ni sorry for preaching to the big some scientists in shame i approve
Nasikia niko yani safe nikiangalia height niko sawa. Nikiona sembe nimekula. Unanielewa? Yeah. I go to some place and people ask me. But the way this one, when you come out. Yeah. So I enjoy protection. Psychologically because some people have to think twice, especially mothers, before they come after my wallet. And I have my own way of walking. By the way, I wanted to become a soldier when I was still a young boy. Serikali li nyima kazi. Now, there are several considerations that make this salvation great. Number one, it addresses the greatest problem of humanity. This salvation is great. It is so special. So unique in that it addresses the greatest problem of humanity. My friends, our greatest problem is not even the economy. It is not even security. It is not even the problem of, you know, limited job opportunities. No, our greatest problem as humanity is the problem of sin. You know, God created man as a perfect being and he even put him in a nested, called the Eden nested to manage it. Yeah. But you see, when the serpent appeared and spoke to Eve, yeah, she was swayed. Now the Mnaya Katupamba, now the Jewish India is here to answer instructions among us. Now, by one man, sin actually got entrance into the world. Are we together? Yes. When Adam and Eve disobeyed God, and you see the consequence of sin is judgment. Are you hearing me? Romans chapter 12, chapter 5, sorry, verse number 12 says, Therefore, just as through one man, Romans 5, 12, just, therefore, just as through one man, sin entered the world, and death through sin, and in this way, death came to all men, because all did what? All sin. And you see, sin poisoned the heart of man. Man became rebellious. Sin became a serious malady that began to actually control and guide, you know, the lifestyle of man. Sin became the genesis of confusion in the mind of man. And my friends, can I submit to us that today we live in a world that is rotten to the core. The moral foundations of our society today are being washed away by sin, which in essence has even been licensed to have its way in our communities. Somebody said this, and I quote, that if our greatest need had been information, God would have sent us an educator. If our greatest need had been technology, God would have sent us a scientist. If our greatest need had been money, God would have sent us an economist. If our greatest need had been pleasure, God would have sent us an entertainer. But our greatest <laughs> need was forgiveness. So God sent us a savior. End of quote. You realize that the problem of humanity is the problem of sin. Today we are living in the world where Satan, who is the great adversary, has simultaneously coined ways, you know, of making evil to appear attractive. He makes evil to appear good. Wickedness is embraced as something that is right. Deception began to 
appear like truth. And that which is bitter at times is projected as law. It is very sweet. Are you hearing me? Because the devil has a way of making evil to appear good. That's why when you love God at times people will mock you in this world. Mi kuna mzaya yuwa inileje ya shida. Kanyambia wewe kijana. Kwe ni mdogo sana umeogoko mearibikia kwa hivyo. I was carrying, you know, in the field. Tunajua hile drown, ni meikausha kwa jua. Going for the big week service. Yeah, so he sees me carrying the drown na hile stick ya kushukulikia. I used to be very tara. Yeah, in that particular area. Hata kama mungu wa kunipea sauti ya kuimba, but at least I could be able to do wonders. You know, hile Shikia wa kwa magoti, roa na shuka. And this old man says, young man, now you've well mearibikia kwa biblia. You know, people call you names when you choose to live for God. And they will tell you, you're such a young girl. Mbono unataka kujifanya mbolijo sana. At 23 years old, you want to become mama assembly. You know, people will call you names. People will call you names. Because we are living in a post, postmodern culture where evil is actually glorified. Are you hearing me? And the good values are despised. That is why when you look at our media, it is always openly flounding images of sensuality that have even become the breeding grounds of lust in the human heart. Some of our once, you know, respected national newspapers. Today they are filled with articles on sexual revolution and liberation. Yeah, you know they are justifying mpango wa kando infidelity. Look at the music videos today on our television sets. You will see young girls that are skimpily dressed. And you know they dance in a particular way where they only gyrate their waist. Yes. <laughs> Sensuality. Now, our culture today has actually gone bankrupt in terms of morality. And you see, the philosophy of the world today is go for what makes you happy. That is what today what passes for entertainment. You know, in terms of the music industry, they are very coherent rumblings of a twisted mind that is glorifying so don't mean rape and drugs. Heroes that are big zeros. They have nothing to offer. Now, when you look at the titles ascribed to the person of Jesus, akuna ile title inanibamba sana kama ile ya Savior. Hey, Matthew chapter 1, verse number 21. Bible says, Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. The very name Jesus means salvation. So God in his foreknowledge looked down and saw the fall of man. And in the council of eternity, Jesus volunteered to live heaven and come to earth to save men. Are we together? And you see, for him to fulfill the law, he had to go all the way to Golgotha, Calvary, you know, and pay the penalty for our sin and rise again from death. Do you know why? So that you and I could be able to stand an opportunity to be reconciled back to God. Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of what? The mission of sin. In Luke chapter number two, somewhere there, you come across a man known as Simeon. He had received a prophetic word that he was not going to die until he sees the hope of the consolation of Israel. Are we together? And at one particular point, he has an opportunity. He comes face to face with Jesus as a little baby. And he says that, Lord, now let your servant depart in peace 
according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation. Your salvation. He was looking at Jesus as he spoke those words. Because the name Jesus basically means salvation. My friends, Savior is not a honorary title that was given to Jesus in recognition of him being a great teacher. No. They didn't call him Savior because of his wonderful teachings. They called him Savior because it was a, a depiction of his ministry as one that had actually come to save man from the bondage of sin. You know, the wrath of God against our sin is the fundamental problem that the gospel addresses. You know, when Jesus was dying on the cross, he died as a propitiation for our sins. In other words, he was actually turning away the anger, the wrath of God. His death on the cross was a sacrifice that could turn away the wrath of God in order that you and I could have an opportunity to be saved through faith in Him. Scripture teaches us that no amount of human goodness, human works, human morality, or religious activity can actually be able to gain acceptance with God or get anyone into heaven. You know, the moral man, the religious man, the immoral man, the non-religious man, they are all in the same boat. In the same boat. They fall short of God's perfect righteousness. Are you hearing me? Yes. And so there isn't anything that you would consider to be a ceremonial rite in all the churches in the world that can save a man. Jesus alone is the way to eternal life. You know, it is great salvation because it addresses the problem of sin by affording us an opportunity to receive forgiveness and be spared from judgment. My friend, if you are lost, this Savior longs to save you. You need saving because all people are born as sinners. And it's only through the washing of his blood that one can be washed white. Unajua kuna tofauti, ya kuwa washed white, na kuwa white washed. Are you hearing me? Yeah, many people today are white washed. But what they need is to be washed white. Are you hearing me? They need to be washed white. Yeah. Because you can actually undergo all the rituals. In your church, they can be performed on you. But you really need to be washed white to inherit eternal life. Are we together? Yes. Now, this salvation, secondly, is great because it required the paying of the, the greatest sacrifice beyond the human or angelic ability. It required the pain of the greatest sacrifice beyond human or angelic ability. I say this because this world will never know a sacrifice greater than the one that was made by Jesus. You know, he willingly relinquished his claim to his divine attributes. And you know, the possessions that he was entitled to fully as God. You know, when you read in Philippians chapter 2, take us there, verse number 5, all the way to verse number 8, you actually begin to see what this meant, that your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found 
in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Now, you realize that Jesus voluntarily relinquished his attributes. You know, Jesus was God a hundred percent and he was not a hundred percent. Are you hearing me? Yeah, he needed to come as man because he was coming to die on behalf of man, in the place of man. But again, man could not be able to save man from sin. It could only take God to save man from his fallen state of sin. And that is why he was God a hundred percent and man a hundred percent. When we talk about the sacrifice of Christ, he sacrificed number one, his heavenly home. Yeah. A place of joy, a happiness, a place where pleasure abounds. In Psalm 16 verse number 11, the Bible says, in thy presence is fullness of what? Joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. So you realize he sacrificed his heavenly home, a place of joy, a place of, you know, a happiness, a place that, you know, pleasure abounds, and he was willing to come by virtue of his love for humanity to come and die. So he actually left the palatial mansions of home and came to walk on earth as an ordinary man. Akava Afunja Kaketebea in the desert in Palestine as an ordinary man. And you see even during his stay on earth he had very few possessions. No home. He didn't even have a home. And if you think I'm lying, read Matthew chapter 8 verse number 20. Kuna mtu alimwambia Yesu na kufuata Yesu akamwambia usinifuate Foxes have holes man is in a ladder Lakini mwana wa Adam Now he also sacrificed his honor his honor In this world he was actually dishonored When you look at Psalm 22 verse number 6 and 7 that Psalm is a messianic Psalm it's actually prophetically spoke about the person of Jesus. And you see how he was actually ridiculed. He was mocked. Jesus was hated by men. Yeah, the young and the old. In fact, when you look at it, the religious Pharisees said he cast out demons by the power of Beelzebub. Yeah, in Matthew 12, 24, the scribes claimed that he actually had an unclean spirit. Yeah. In fact, in John chapter 8, verse 41, the Pharisees went ahead now and said, you are a product of fornication. Yeah. Read in John chapter 8. You know, all of that was being spoken to who? The Lord of glory, God in flesh. Emmanuel, God with us. You know, he sacrificed his honor to come and experience the disdain and ridicule of men. My friends, when he came to die, he sacrificed his honor. And thirdly, he sacrificed his life through the shedding of his blood. Take us to Revelation chapter 1, verse number 5. It actually talks about, you know, Jesus saving our lives yeah, through the shedding of his own blood, the loss of his own life, because blood represents life. Bible says, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness? The firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins. By what? By his blood. Yeah. It cost him his life. 
through the shedding of his blood. That is why salvation is not based on good works. It's not even based on ceremonies. It is not based on some creeds. It's not even based on a code of, of conduct or a code of, of ethics. But it is basically founded on the finished work of Jesus on the cross. The wounding of Jesus, the bruising he endured was that his blood may be able to flow freely for the remission of your sins and my sins. You know, his body was bruised very horribly, very terribly, and all of that happened until he was almost beyond recognition. Just as prophet Isaiah had prophesied earlier, and he realized all of that happened to afford us an opportunity to know God. My friends, it is a great salvation by reason of the greatest sacrifice. Thirdly, it results into greatest transformation in people's lives. This salvation is great. Maana inaza mabadiliko ya ajabu ndani mwa maisha ya watu. fall back to my 
usual way of life. Yeah. It's until I got born again that I realized the Christian life, you live it just by the grace of God. God saves you and gives you the ability to live according to his will. Are you hearing me? Yes. I am saying this to a person who has postponed. Yeah. You postpone the decision of giving your life to Jesus. Because you look at yourself and you say, I will lie, me, kuna I bless it at Despite the grace of God. My friends, this word transformed speaks of a change, a conversion. It speaks of something that alters the course of events, the direction. Salvation is a transformation in which God changes us from who we were into the image and likeness of Christ. And this is the greatest transformation ever that a person can experience. I tell you for real, yeah, you know, this great salvation is what makes it possible, yeah, for the transformation of character to take place, providing you with the power to conquer sin. Honestly, I have no idea which cigarettes exist in the market. And whenever I was drinking, I would, you know, smoke a pack. And I shall be fed it. I shall not be fed it. What about the young girl? And I'm not even part of. Yeah, not a carita for the young girl. You know. But today, when I just come across the smell, yeah, tobacco smoke. Because you begin to feel it. And I'm not speaking this to, to mock people. I understand. I was there. And at times people feel helpless. How will I come out of this habit? This salvation is able to trigger the change. We move from a sinner to a saint, from unholy to holy, to, you know, from being rejected to being what? Accepted. We move from eternal death to eternal life. There is something that happens to us. We stop living by what we see. We don't walk by what we see. Are we together? Yes. Yeah. We begin to live by faith. Yeah, we begin to live with the understanding that we are no longer alienated from God, but are reconciled back to Him. And if anything ever happens to us in this life, to be absent in the body is to be present. Yes, Yeah, I live in a new, 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 I live in a new
hiyo tu maisha yako it has to count more than the number of <laughs> Tell your neighbor wachana na hii mchezo. <laughs> Finally as I finish it is the greatest way of escape from God's impending judgment. The salvation is great because it is the greatest way of escape. In fact, the only way of escape from God's impending judgment. I finish by saying this, we are living in times where we are having a doctrine of extreme grace. The Bible says the grace of God teaches us to renounce, to say no to wickedness, say no to sin, to renounce every ungodliness. Today we are having many voices and they are saying, you know, live anyhow, you just live, it doesn't matter, all your sins are under the covering of the blood, yeah, and people are becoming careless in their way of living. True grace teaches us to say no to evil. Are you hearing me? True grace does not justify sin. I was saying this to say this. <laughs> there are people who talk about the God of grace, but they don't talk about him as the God of judgment. In fact, when you talk about the hell and the coming judgment, they say, don't scare people. <laughs> My friend, hell is real. And hell is not like, hey, 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 in the hotel, you go funny. Yeah. is a place of torment, is a place of regret, is a place of eternal separation from God, is a place of no second chance. And salvation provides us the only way of escape from God's impending judgment. You know in Hebrews 2.2 2, the Bible says every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. Ezekiel says in 1820, the soul that sinned shall die. But thank God for the coming of Jesus. That the price for our sin was paid for in totality. My friends, in Romans, no, Revelations 20, verse 11 to 15, John says, Kisha nikaona vitabu zikafunguliwa. Kwanza bahari katoa of work. Yani hakuna mwenye ata escape. What? And he's talking about the great white from judgment. The judgment of all the wicked. At the end of this age. And so the hour is coming where every unsaved and regenerate sinner must meet the Holy God. For a very detailed review of his or her life upon this planet. When the books of God will be opened, every offender's tongue will be silenced. There will be no hope in them, but the good news is there is a hope now. Your past can be liquidated. Are you hearing me? Yes. Your past can be obliterated. It can be forgotten. Yeah, it can if you let Jesus come into your life. My friends, even the guiltiest of all men can immediately be absolved, be absolved from their wrongdoings, their sins, just by trusting in the merits of the shed blood of Jesus. Why? Because Jesus died for our sins. Potentially, your sins have been paid for my brother. My friend, your sins have been paid for in to totality. But experientially, you must receive what has been provided. So the question still remains, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Jesus alone is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father 
except through him. The day and the time is coming when people will have to give an account for their lives. I pray that each and every person listening to the sound of my voice will never, never
reach out to them in your mercy. Minister to them according to the working of your power. To heal the sick, O oh God. Encourage the disheartened. Release your joy of salvation. Let your presence be their portion. In the name of Jesus. You are here, you are not born again. Our time is up. But you say, Pastor Martin, would you pray with me to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior? Kindly put up your hands. It will be my joy to pray with you. Are you here? You are not born again. And you say, Pastor, I want to accept Jesus. Is there any such an individual in our midst? Father, we bless you. We thank you because you are continuing to do a work in our hearts. And I pray for the entire student fraternity, the College of Health Sciences, that Lord, you will draw them to yourself by your spirit. Receive glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.